Legion, Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 2, another episode I love. Spoils of everything, uh, everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. Let's dive right in. So, let's see. Yeah, we get some narration to help bring us up to speed. I really appreciate because there were a couple of things in there that I did not... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we weren't supposed to know for sure from episode one. And... Let's see... Yeah, we're told the divisions are to control, you know, mutants or kill them. And Melanie gives a short speech on evolution that, yeah, couldn't help but hear that in Patrick Stewart's Charles Xavier voice. And, yeah. I really like the fact that they call it memory work and talk work. And, and you know, one point Sid straight up says, do the work. I'm almost 100% certain that I've heard that that is like actual... Yeah, what's the word? That's the... the psych, psychiatric... Uh, terms, you know, so, yeah, because he's still, you know, he, he's not mentally ill, or at least not as mentally ill as people think, but he does have this mutant ability that appears to many people as mental illness, so it's, there is some similarities between what he's doing now and what he did when it was thought to only be, yeah. So, very, very tense, uh, the bedtime scene. That is a really messed up book to be reading to a, to a child. Um, and David doesn't say that never happened. That's a, you know, I don't know why we're seeing this. He says, I don't want to talk about it. So, there's something there that... I hope they explore that more in, in future episodes, because I, yeah, I really gotta know. And he could not see his father's face, you know, no no matter what. And, yeah, there's a very eternal sunshine of the spotless mind quality to the memory work scenes. You know, he's walking around the actual memory, he's sw switching places with his younger self, stuff like that. Really, yeah, absolutely love it. Great movie, great show so far. And yeah, understandably, he gets very upset. And Lenny is back. More excellent scenes. Just, yeah. Um, and let's see. The... Yeah, they talk about how, you know, seemingly, um, they, they believe that David is the key to winning the war. And then we have the... Yeah, we learn that Tonami can remember everything, even his birth, even the womb before that. Yeah, that's that really is a a fascinating. I've I've heard I'm not sh I've I've heard others say stuff like that. I'm not certain if it is that anyone actually can or that some people believe they they could or, or what it is but yeah that is a really fascinating idea and <laughs> Sid has these you know gloves on to, to so she doesn't directly physically touch really made me think of rogue and 
yeah, and and David repeats the the bazooka line as, yeah, Sid is trying to apologize for for killing Lenny, and let's see, yeah, and and you know she explains like she said something about like it even being close to people, even not touching them. You know, feels like ants, feels like needles. <laughs> and, yeah, um, Carrie with a C, Loudermilk, is not talking to himself. He's talking to Carrie with a K, Loudermilk. And... I will not pretend that I understood much of anything that was... Like, he... It sounded like nonsense. I kind of want to know... I kind of want to... But on the other hand, it's, the, the mystery is also really cool. Because, like, it did He wasn't saying, like, no, a little to the right, no, up, no, can, can you adjust it a little? He said stuff like Alaska. And, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, and and we're we're back in a, a memory, and Amy is saying, I, I didn't catch if this was the the uh, let's see, I think his name was Ben. Um, yeah, Ben. But you know, she said that you know I think he's going to propose, and you know David is out of it. I really love I I love when a show is so daring. It actually has her like out of focus for like several seconds because that reflects he's he's not focusing on her, so it's only natural to you know, there's a lot of people who say, Ah, you know, that's bad filmmaking, you can't do that. You know, the subject is supposed to be in perfect focus, but I yeah, really, really excellent you know, and, and she's like, Come come on, you know, and, and she snaps in his face the same as Tonomy says his father used to and you know, and yeah, David has to think of something nice to say, so it's like, good job. <laughs> and yeah, she's very supportive. She's like, you should get to have a happy life like everyone else. Just, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't decide if I wanted to say everyone or everybody, so just did both. And yeah, um... Lenny tries to sell the stove to a care to, to the Greek played by Eddie Jameson from Ocean's Eleven, Livingston Dell, and and apparently also a couple of I only watched Ocean's Eleven. I I might at some point watch some point watch the, the later ones. And Mickey Duca from the 2004 Punisher movie. Holy crap, he was in Nope. Wow, I'll have to give that movie a third watch. I didn't pick up on where he was at all. I, I, wow. Okay. Um, I mean, he evidently doesn't. He doesn't look that different. I, you know, this episode is from 2017. That movie's from 22. Anyway, um, but yeah, the and they do the thing. They they some of the time Lenny's voice is sped up. Sometimes it's like slowed down very cool and we you know slow motion on the dog and there's that kid who's like um what's it called like like i guess it's a yeah he's like breaking stuff for fun and yeah you know lenny gets the the drug the blue the vapor and for a second there, as he's high, he sees the the yellow-eyed demon in Lenny, and the the yeah, he he really struggles to to come to terms with that when you know Tonomi directly says, I mean, the, you had a distinct reaction. What what happened there? And. Yeah, and and the I like I am I do I will, and they try to 
go to the kitchen, but instead he ends up with, you know, yeah, by himself as a, as a kid, and the, the book falls on the, on the floor. See, I don't think that a child needs to have any kind of mental health issue to be really upset by that book. Like, holy crap. And let's see. Yeah, you know, he... Yeah, he's, he's talking to, to Sid, and, you know, the... Yeah, she explains about, oh, you know, they're, they're coming for us. And then she thinks, I'll protect you. And he's like, I, I didn't mean to read your mind. I, I, I'm struggling to control, you know. And, and she's like, you should learn, because there's some stuff that you really should not... Where you really should not read people's minds, you know. And then, you know, to diffuse, you know, and he's like, I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to. And then to diffuse the situation, she thinks, you are cute, though, knowing that he's going to pick that up. I just, that was, that was a very nice little moment. And, let's see. Yeah, the, the, um, we have this detail about, you know, yeah, uh, David is in Dr. Poole's office, the psychiatrist's office, and he's, like, trying to figure out, is this a good place to, to steal from? And this, you know, this is obviously not something that anyone likes being the case, and it's definitely, there. there's lots of people with mental health issues that would not do this, but there there are some people who yeah you know the the what is it dr Poole refers to it as self medicating or some something like that you know that's the that's the general idea you know he's trying to cope with his mental illness by stealing stuff selling it for drugs and doing those drugs and let's see yeah, and, and, you know, he talks about, you know, oh, his dad would wake him up, which, again, like, man, this... I know we, we are not meant to speak ill of the dead, but he's also fictional, so I think they cancel each other out. David's dad sounds like a jerk. If... If my father had woken me up in the middle of the night... When I was a kid, so like 30 years ago, so we could look at stars, he would still be hearing about it to this day. I would never stop bugging him about it. And the, yeah, you know, he says, oh, the, the stars talk to me. And he said, oh, the, me too, but he meant it metaphorically. And then, you know, Poole asks the million dollar question, what, what did you talk about? Or what did they tell you? Something like that. And I guess it's maybe the telekinesis. He's he's like opening the 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 closet door a little bit, and you know he says I'm not supposed to talk about it, which you know really implies some kind of repressed memory. Like that sounds. Oh God. His father abused him, didn't he? That's. That's why he took him away. That's why he doesn't want to talk about it. Because he already said we lived in a place that didn't have light pollution, so why did they need to drive anywhere for him to see the stars? Oh, God, yeah. And maybe that's part of why he read that book to him, to, like, scare him out of telling anyone. Yeah. I really hope I'm proven wrong by later episodes. And let's see. Yeah, and now we see, yeah, Carrie with a K is actually in the room. I know we're only two episodes in, but Amber Mithunder, I really hope she gets significantly more screen time. She's got such a strong presence in, in Prey, a movie that is severely underrated. Now, the... Let's see. Yeah, and, and we see Amy, you know, she, she went to the, the institution and is trying to get help in, in finding David. 
and they claim there's no record of David, there's no record of Dr. Kissinger. And then there's this, like, almost like threat of, you know, maybe we should take you in for observation. How long have you been having these thoughts? You know, weaponizing mental health care, which sadly some, you know, some people with power over at least individuals try to, and sometimes sadly succeed in. And... Then the lights go off. It's just really, really creepy when he's there in inside the um, the MRI machine, and we hear the the growling and there's like chomping noises. Just blech. and then we see the 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 devil with the yellow eyes. That's right. That's what it's called. Um, apparently played by Quentin. I'm gonna butcher this. Boz Claire, I guess is maybe how you pronounce it. And yeah, he in general, he plays a lot of... So yeah, let's see. He played Demon, Skinwalker, Creature... Yeah, various... But he, I mean, he does a fantastic job so far. Um, absolutely fantastic. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay, I gotta... So, yeah, on his IMDb page. Quentin basically had a dream origin story that got him into a movie career. He was working in a comic book store with a lot of knowledge on comics. Someone noticed his tall, slender frame, considered him suitable as a creature performer. This, combined with his knowledge of comics, propelled him into Legion. Amazing. Yeah, just... I... I... Because it's not easy. Like, he's got a real presence. Like, there's... I realize that, obviously, there's definitely some, some prosthetics. His He doesn't look exactly like that in, in real life. But the eyes, though, like, the the power behind those eyes is is really strong. And... Yeah. Um... David warps reality to take the MRI machine and himself outside. That's that's a really cool cause because yeah, you know, he he really wants to, to get out of there and you know, this is the second time in two episodes we've seen him warp reality. Like that's that's not he didn't just like use telekinesis. Cause how did it get out there if it was just He's warping reality, and yeah, you know, clear. Yeah, when he's when he's really upset, sometimes that takes over, and he warps reality. And let's see. Yeah, um, you know, he talks to to Sid. He he wants to to leave, and Sid tries to, to talk him out of it, and. You know, he says, I, I saw her. You, you saw your, your sister was in the MRI? <laughs> I'm really glad to see that she hasn't lost her snark at all. Like, that was not just, you know, for clockworks. That's that's just in general. She can be very, very snarky. <laughs> like, Sid, you're supportive a lot of the time. I think this might be a good time to be supportive. And, and yeah, you know, she points out, you know, stay here, do the work. And, you know, he's like, what if they kill her? And she points out, they won't. Because she's the bait. And we end on her face-to-face -face with the eye. Mackenzie Gray doing a fantastic performance. And the, the, yeah, um... Oh, yeah, that is... Holy crap, yeah. I thought I saw him somewhere before he was in Man of Steel. Yeah. It's got a very recognizable face. Very... I, I love a face with character. And the... the let's see... Yeah, and there's these, like... I, I forget what they're called, but these these small animals in the... in the. I guess it's a aquarium behind him. It's very, very creepy. 
So some IMDb trivia for this episode. When Lenny is the projection David is having of her, of her instead of actually her, the ring tattoos on her fingers are missing. The milk that David and Tonomi drink after David wakes up from his memory work is a reference to Clockwork Orange. He's preparing to go out with his droobs. And... There are a lot of eyes watching David throughout the episode, especially in his scenes with Lenny while she has the stove. Yeah. Rachel Keller, Sid, sings a cover of the Talking Heads song, Road to Nowhere. <laughs> Pay attention to David's t-shirt designs throughout the show. The colors and symbols are key to his mental state throughout the episodes. And, and yeah, early in the episode, Tony tells David about remembering his birth, whether it's darkness, then pressure, then light. David actually experiences this later in the episode while he's in the MRI machine. And... Yeah. Um... Really loving the show so far. I really appreciate it. Honestly, based on some of the reviews I read, I thought that there would basically be nothing to latch on to as far as, like, okay, you know, he's... At least some of what we're seeing must be real. I, it, some, some people kind of made it sound like it was just non-stop dream log logic and such, which, you know, I... I was down for, absolutely, but no, I mean, so far, there's definitely, you know, there, there are times where, you know, we're not entirely sure if what we're seeing is 100% real or not, but there's definitely some stuff, there, there's a lot of stuff in both of these episodes that I feel confident saying that must have been real, at the very least, like, a lot of what we saw there. Maybe a little bit of it was affected, but yeah, I, I think that does make a lot of sense, you know, for a three season show, you know, to, to give people something specific to latch on to.